The following is a live copyrighted presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for Radiolawtalk.com with your host, Frederick Penny, attorney at law. And now, Radiolawtalk.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another exciting episode of Radio Law Talk. I am not Fred Penny. I am Todd Cunin. Fred Penny is on assignment. Fred, we know you're listening. Wish you were here, buddy. Todd Cunin here to my right in the usual place of prominence, respect, and dignity is Denise Dirks. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, well, you know, outstanding, like a farmer in his field. And the bad jokes just start with that. Oh, boy. Here we go. (laughs) Behind the glass, none other than Cal Hunter. Cal, good morning. Hey, thank you. Hello there, everyone. Morning, afternoon, whenever you're listening. It's morning to us. It it is. (laughs) And Cal, the beard is coming in nicely. Thank you. I just got my barber looked at it and said, okay, I'll work with you. (laughs) Okay. You know, Cal's got the beard. I'm sporting the beard. Yeah. Denise? She has Ringo Starr hair. She does. <laughs> I do. Is, so, do tell what happened. What I went and I saw Ringo Starr last night oh, cool. and his All Star Band, and it was amazing. And I found out something new. I didn't realize that Ringo Starr All Star Band actually changes up from time to time. Like he, I guess he had Joe Walsh ba- a while back, oh. and you know all that. But last night he had um, uh, one of the members from Toto. Uh, one of the members from Men at Work. Oh, cool. And one of the members from the Average the White a- Band. AWB, the yeah. Average White oh, Band. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Wow. What a show. Oh, it was cool. so much fun. I did not sit down. Really? I danced the whole entire time. Did somebody fun open for him, or was it just some some nondescript performer? Did they have a, usually have an opening act, and you go... They did not. Oh, cool. That's yeah, he better. did the whole entire time. Started at 7 and ended at 10. That is awesome. A, it a was three hours. Three wow. hours. For Ringo, who's like in his mid-70s, right? He's 76 yeah, or something like great. that. He looked great. He sounded great. Um, he had a lot of fun, and he played, you know, he played a little bit with himself and made some jokes, and then he was out front and center, and then he went up to the drums, and I'll tell you what. Oh, so he was a front man for a little while. Yes. I don't, I've never seen him as a front man. Um, I mean, I've, I couldn't visualize him is a better word to put it. I think that's probably why he has all-stars. It helps him out. Yeah. But you could tell that every single person on that stage loves him respects him yeah. and respects him and yeah. likes and has fun playing with him and once so. they once he gets on the drum kit well forget about it right it, it was awesome i could yeah. just tell you i i couldn't sit down i i had to move away from my the people that i was seated uh, sat next to me on my left because <laughs> i apparently was letting my arms fly a little bit too much <laughs> and they kind of warned me with an arm push oh a lawsuit's <laughs> coming huh <laughs> i'm like i'm getting on the other side of my husband <laughs> well you know the last the last concert i went to was was kiss you talk about people touring in their in their 70s right. I, I went to go see kiss earlier this year when the, it was we right both when did, i know we not? and denise was there you should have here she's got the face paint and I got the and spiky boots. The spiky boots. Cool. She put some ketchup in her mouth, was spitting it out, trying to imitate. <laughs> nice. Some of that information may be incorrect. I'll let you pick out. I mean, okay, so it was it that was accurate information all the way up to the point where I said Denise was there. So <laughs> everything else may have been a fabrication on my part, but it was a blast. I thought it was a, a pipe dream or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the uh, the two concerts my wife and I saw and enjoyed were, but most were Paul McCartney and Barry Manilow. I thought Barry Manilow was pretty good. I I've heard he does it. a good show. He does do mm-hmm. a very good show. And Paul McCartney, we saw him in San Francisco at the the big open Giants ballpark there. Wow. Yeah, and just a while back, um, Ringo Starr crashed Paul McCartney's concert. Yeah, in Los Angeles. Yeah. I know. Where were we then? Well, we weren't there. Yeah. We know that. Wow. Much. <laughs> I would have I, given anything. It, it's it's great when that when you have former band members crash. I mean, people might not know this one, but I went to go see Sammy Hagar back oh, in. Yeah. Uh, I think it was 2003. It was before his reunion with Van Halen in '04. That was just oh a disaster of a tour. But uh, I saw him, and. A guest was Ronnie Montrose. Oh, come on. Oh. And they were out there and they played all of the old stuff and they and it was it was just a couple of years before Montrose died. And that was so nobody knew that was gonna happen. See that's it was the just cool part. Great to have him out there and to, you know, 
Outstanding. But, you know, this is, uh, if this were radio concert talk, we could probably go on all afternoon, morning, whenever you're listening to this. But it is radio law talk, and we got stuff we got to cover, don't we, Denise? We have a lot to cover. You know, uh, it, in the news this week came out the uh, the baseball player that was found dead in his hotel room previously, uh, you know, a couple of months back, the coroner released the autopsy and it gave cause of death. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about a couple of things that are all topically related. I say that because it, it's all the same topic. They, they're not interrelated in that one didn't cause the other in terms of stories. We're going to talk about that. There's a doctor in Ohio that's facing murder charges because of overprescription of, of pain medication. And then we'll talk about the lawsuits that uh, Johnson & Johnson, as well as the Sackler family, the opioid manufacturers are facing and, and what's going on there. <clears throat> We've also got Really unique case is probably the first of its kind. Does how far does the jurisdiction for criminal offenses extend? Is space the final frontier when it comes to uh, to criminal offenses? An astronaut at NASA may have committed an offense while orbiting the Earth. Uh, we'll talk about that. Also talk about some stuff going on in and around the NBA, criminal uh, offenses, civil lawsuits. Cal. Wait, is that like international waters or something when you do something in space? I don't think they can do anything about it. Well, no, you, I, I think they can. No, no, no. <laughs> Have we claimed space territory? It's just, I don't want to, I don't want um, to open it up too it's soon, but it, it's very about. similar yeah. to what happens on the seas. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I was, it, <laughs> I could see a creative defense attorney going, well, it's airspace, yeah, but there is no air in space. Hello? Okay, it's not <laughs> oxygen. It's okay, whatever. So we're going to talk about that. Okay, we'll get into stuff with some NBA players, Luke Walton, Shaquille O'Neal, DeMarcus Cousins, all different cases, not related, but each one of those facing some legal troubles. And then we're going to talk about, I mean, it wouldn't be a radio law talk without Harvey Weinstein coming up, right? Right. So we talk about that, uh, a really... Well, some are saying a very light sentence handed down to a, a teen accused of or convicted Actually. convicted of rape, um, got probation. And, 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 you know, look, I know that we deal with U.S. law, but I think radio law talk is going international, so we're going to talk about Brexit and what's going on across the pond over in England. But before we get to all of that, Cal... You know where I'm headed. All right, here we go. I'm doing it. Now it's time to play Case or No Case. Yay! It's not me. It's not me. An Albuquerque, New Mexico woman kept telling the police, it's not me. Tell it to the judge, they said, and tossed Joy Morales into the back of the patrol car in handcuffs. She was pulled over for rolling through a stop sign in Albuquerque. Police ran her driver's license and said, ma'am, you got a warrant out for your arrest out of Arizona. That is not me, she said. I've never been to Arizona, much less have a warrant from there. And what's more, I've never had a warrant out for me anywhere. That is not me. Officers have heard that phrase before, so they didn't buy into the whole thing. Uh, and it was uh, it's something that she got upset about. So they dragged her in, kept her in jail for about 40 days, and got to the bottom of the case, but it was it was a mix-up, but it cost her a couple of months of her life. And so I ask you, Todd and Denise, and we have about a minute left for you to start formulating your opinion, case or no case. It's criminal, Todd, so I'm going to let Denise go first uh, because I don't want to you to play off of his answer. Okay, never mind. We don't have enough time anyway. Well, can, can we just ask some general follow-up yeah, questions? Yeah, I want to ask go. her name go. again. Oh, okay. What's her name? Hold on a second. I have it on my iPhone this time because it keeps messing up my computer. Joy Morales, M-O-R-A-L-E-S. And, and this was, she was arrested for a warrant, but she's saying it's not her, it's somebody else. Correct. She was uh, she was pulled over okay. for a t small traffic violation. They did a wants and warrants check on her, and they said, hey, uh, you got a problem here, lady. You got a warrant out of Arizona. She said, I haven't, even, you know, I haven't been there. And, and what state is she arrested in? New Mexico. New Mexico, okay. So, so a neighboring state, we could say. Interesting. Yep. Well, we're going to come back after this break and find out what's going on with uh, Case or No Case. You're listening to Radio Law Talk. Join us or stick with us. Want to hear what you have to say. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. 
Know someone with a drinking or drug problem? Learn how to get sober after we share these stories. I was 35 with two beautiful children when my life and addiction started to spiral out of control. After my divorce, I went into a depression cycle and started drinking more often and using prescription drugs. After my second DWI and arrest, my ex-husband threatened to take our children away from me. I was 17 when I became addicted to heroin and meth. I thought I could quit on my own, but I couldn't. It hit me when I was arrested. Get sober now. Your private insurance may cover costs and we'll get you here. It's simple. Just call Elite Rehab Placement right now. Please don't wait. Your life matters to us. 800-918-1376. 800-918-1376. That's 800-918-1376. Not all law firms have extensive experience in all areas of the law. It's wise to look for firms that have knowledge and understanding in your particular area of concern. So go to ProLawFirms.com. They have listings of attorneys in key areas of practice, such as family law, estate planning, personal injury, bankruptcy, and so forth. When you're looking for a lawyer that has extensive experience in your particular area of need, go to ProLawFirms.com. That's ProLawFirms.com. ProLawFirms.com is not a law firm and does not endorse or recommend any specific law firm. If you're one of those independent people who wants your own business and you love food service, we just might have a great opportunity for you. Iceberg Drive-Ins. Iceberg is famous for its thick shakes and delicious food. We lend you our supply chain and expertise, and you can potentially have a thriving, successful, fun business that your customers will love. Iceberg Drive-Ins has some prime areas available right now, so if you're interested, get in touch with us right away. Go to icebergdrivein.com and click on the Contact Us button. Iceberg Drive-In, ready to grow with you. All right, guys, we need to have you read some lines for our disclaimer promo, but first, can anybody tell me what a disclaimer is? Right then. Well, uh, Denise, you go ahead. Non uti consilius por purpurium juris consult. That's a nice touch. Thank you, Denise. Next time we'll try it in English if that's okay. Fred, how about you? Cal, I don't want to read all this. Can we just tell the people that we're discussing general legal issues and they should hire their own attorney instead of relying on what we have to say here? Well, we could, I guess. Uh, uh, Chris? I'm not going to be there anyway. Why have me do it? Let's, Let's have, have Todd, Todd do it. it. Me? Read disclaimers? Why, I couldn't. <coughs> the information you hear on Radio Law Talk is general. The preceding promo was for entertainment purposes only. And if you want true legal advice, contact your own lawyer. Just a tip from your friends at Radio Law Talk. Be sure to read our disclaimers on RadioLawTalk.com as well. Today we decided to walk to school. At the corner, we waited to cross the street. The stoplight counted down. Fifteen... 41, 31, I mean 13. We, we took, took a, a left, left on Carroll Garden Street. Garden and Street? Loud, Loud music, music was, was coming from, from a car. car. Danny's a smart kid, but he gets so distracted. There were so many other sounds. I didn't know what to focus on. Danny, earth to Danny. Suddenly he realized he forgot his homework again. I left my homework on the table. At the, the school, school steps, steps we, we hugged goodbye. goodbye. I, I really, really hope, hope he doesn't have another, another bad day at school, school today. today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. That's why there's understood.org, a free online resource for the parents of the one in five kids with learning and attention issues. Get personalized recommendations, practical tips, daily access to experts, and more. Go from misunderstanding to understood.org. Brought to you by Understood and the Ad Council. Radio Law Talk. I like that show. This is Radio Law Talk. Okay, so we're back here at Radio Law Talk in the middle of Case or No Case, the case of the woman who was pulled over and said it wasn't me. Cal, you want to give us a quick recap? You bet. Uh, Her name was uh, Joy Morales. She got pulled over for blowing through a stop sign in Arizona. The cop did a want and warrant check on her and said, whoa, you got a warrant for you for DUI out of Arizona. She said, no way. Guy says, way, takes her off to jail. And she stayed in jail for about four weeks. Um... I could tell you the rest of the story, but I'd rather rather do that the later. 
Uh, actually, uh, I can tell you the rest of the story. It turns out that Ms. Morales had a high school friend who was, in fact, pulled over for DUI without ID. She told the officer that she was Joy Morales and gave the officer Joy Morales' birth date. And therefore, she actually did have a warrant out for her arrest, even though it wasn't her. And so she sought counsel, and that's where the question comes in, case or no case. Mr. Kunin, what say you? Uh, when did this happen? I don't know. Let me look real quick. Dun, 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 dun. I don't know. Dun, 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 I do dun, not know. Dun. Sorry. Okay, so you know, this is very... In it's, it's not an old case like back in the 1800s or anything like that. They didn't get you for DUI in the 1800s. It was kind of expected. Life was hard on the plains. Well, yeah. You know, look, back in back in the 1800s, you'd, it would be RUI, riding a horse while intoxicated, which, interestingly enough, I mean, talk about self-driving vehicles. Uh, that technology's been around since... Exactly. Uh, Horse since, knows the way you know, home. What's yeah, the problem? Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> I fell asleep. <laughs> um, well, you know, here's the thing about this case. Yeah. Uh, th this is something that happens. I I'm waffling between whether or not this is an actual case or not. I can tell you that if it is an actual case, in my humble opinion, represents a colossal failure on the part of law enforcement to um, – actually verify people's identity to figure it out exactly yeah. because look it's not just what you say when you get pulled over and they take your fingerprint uh, when you're arrested for something your fingerprint is how you are identified it goes into the system based upon your fingerprint identifier so when this person gets arrested and she gives her fingerprints once she gets taken back to the jail they would run that and it would this comes back to somebody else the warrants should not have matched because the the friend can lie about her name and age in another jurisdiction but she can't lie about her fingerprints. But you see, it was misdemeanor DUI, and they only gave her a citation, but she did not show up for court. Yeah, and, and so even... she had an FTA. Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, you know, I... Oh, brother, I'm going to say no case. Okay. I'm, I'm going to say no case because um, even on a misdemeanor DUI, they still arrest you, take you to jail. They don't cite and release on DUIs. They shouldn't. Um, they haven't in my experience for the last at least 20 years they always take you in and book you so i'm going to say no case okay <clears throat> pardon me denise what say you case or no case um i'm going to say it's a case and it has to do with the fact that she spent 40 days in jail and they did not release her they did not get you know it, it, it's a case and it was brought about by um some kind of a, a false imprisonment type of a charge or failure for them to get the the information um, out of Arizona or Arizona failing to you know try to get her to Arizona State by the way or something not just one jail but two jails one in New Mexico and one in Arizona yes I I, I think it's a case mm -hmm. um, and I think it has to do with like the underlying idea that she has to be able to be released on her own recognizance or released. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, through bail or bond, and that it's 40 days in jail for this type of a misdemeanor um, uh, allegation against her, no conviction um, against her, and it wasn't her in any way. And I think it does come up as um, maybe a civil case. So a civil case. What do you think the outcome of the civil case would be? I think she wins. Hmm. Interesting. Oh. Todd is shaking his head up and down and going, maybe? Well, I, I hey, look, if, if this is a case, given this scenario, I would absolutely think that a civil case would be coming because after you give the answer of what this really is, I'll talk about some of the problems that are attendant if this is a real case. Okay, well, I guess we can get to the bottom of this and conclude. I'm sure that people are sitting on the edges of their car seats wondering, uh, well, <laughs> well, children sitting on the edges of their car mom, seats. Mom, mom, give me the sippy <laughs> cup. I want to know what case or no case I, I is. Want, I want an answer here. For those of you who say this is not oh, a case, may I see by a show of, uh, of, uh, of hands, because it was, in fact, a case. For those of you who say there were criminal charges proffered against the authorities who wantonly left this young woman in jail, may I see a hand there? Okay, there's nobody criminal charges. Doing that. For those of you who say there was a civil case filed against uh, against the jurisdictions involved, that would be Denise, and the answer is yes. And not only that, but 
They didn't bother to take it to court. They settled out of court. That would make sense. Both jurisdictions, Mm -hmm. both New Mexico and Arizona, because you know what? How can you put this kindly? It was a royal screw-up. It was. It was. Just an absolute... And 40 days of your life, that's a lot. That's what she said. She said, I'll never get it back. Mm -hmm. By the way, as for her friend, a a certain Miss Archibek, she pled guilty to aggravated DUI and criminal impersonation and actually had to spend a year behind bars for doing all of that. Mm -hmm. So her friend paid the price, but both of them paid for the crime. I wonder if she could have petitioned to have her the person she impersonated's time removed from her sentence. Yeah, you got, got credit for the yeah. 40 days. <laughs> I mean, that, that, is, that is something that happens. Somebody gets pulled over, they give their brother's name or whatever, oh, yeah. so yeah. that's the yeah. offense. But here's the problem I've got with this and, right. and, and with the uh, why there should have been a lawsuit and why there was. See, if you get arrested in New Mexico and you don't waive extradition, what you're saying is you got to prove that that warrant is me. And so then they've got to come in, roll your prints, do everything. And if the other jurisdiction just did a site and release and didn't roll the prints and didn't do that, that's on them. That should not have been enough to prove extradition to get her from New Mexico to Arizona. Well, you know what's interesting? When they really finally did this, uh, they had a photo from the scene and then they had her on a subsequent booking photo, and they compared those two photos and said, ah, this is not the person we're looking for. So everybody was embarrassed. This young woman had to sit there in jail, truly an innocent person, wow. and she got some cash for her trouble. So that's that. When we come back, I want to say one other comment about this, but then we're going to get into opioids Yay! and what's going on. <laughs> this is Radio Law Talks. Stay tuned. There's much more coming up right after this. Advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. Warning, don't let your business get left behind in what is likely to be the biggest economic boom in recent history. If you need to build for your business to grow, call General Steel today for a pre-engineered steel building designed for your needs. No wasted space. Steel prices are expected to rise, but you can still lock in your price on a General Steel building. And you can still save as much as half the cost and time of conventional construction. As much as half. But you must call now. If you need a church building, office, warehouse, manufacturing space, retail space, or more. Call General Steel today. You can still get the General's 50-year structural warranty and General Steel quality, all at a price you can afford. So don't let rising steel prices put your project out of reach and stop you from making your company great. 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. 800-617-9312. That's 800-617-9312. Hi, my name is Lily. My mom and dad used to fight about money all the time. Then one day, I heard them talking about this guy. Some uncle I never knew called Uncle Sam. Well, they say this Uncle Sam guy wanted them to pay him like a gazillion dollars. And they didn't have a gazillion dollars. So they called this company they heard on the radio called The Tax Doctor. And The Tax Doctor worked with Uncle Sam's people. I think they're called the IRS. And they're able to work it out so my mom and dad didn't have to pay Uncle Sam very much money at all. So now mom and dad are happy. And I'm happy too. Thanks, Tax Doctor. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state, call now and pay less. 800-263-2610. 800-263-2610. 800-263-2610. 800-263-2610. That's 800-263-2610. Know someone with a drinking or drug problem? Learn how to get sober after we share these stories. I was 35 with two beautiful children when my life and addiction started to spiral out of control. After my divorce, I went into a depression cycle and started drinking more often and using prescription drugs. After my second DWI and arrest, my ex-husband threatened to take our children away from me. I was 17 when I became addicted to heroin and meth. I thought I could quit on my own, but I couldn't. It hit me when I was arrested. Get sober now. Your private insurance may cover costs and we'll get you here. It's simple. Just call Elite Rehab Placement right now. Please, don't wait. Your life matters to us. 800-918-1376. 
800-918-1376. That's 800-918-1376. When you were a little kid and you thought about what you wanted to be, teaching was at the top of your list. But things changed. And as you got older, teaching didn't seem like the best option anymore. So you're thinking you'll be something else. But what would your 12-year-old self say? Now you want to be a doctor. You don't think teachers save lives? 25 at a time. An actress? Try playing a different role every time the bell rings. How about a scientist? Ever heard of physics? Chemistry? Who do you think teaches that? Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, and taking learning far beyond the four walls of the classroom. It's time to recognize that great things are happening in teaching and put it back on your list. Don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. Find out how you can make more at teach.org. Make more. Teach. Brought to you by Teach and the Ad Council. I knew I had a problem, but I didn't know what to do about it. I tried counting calories. I took pills. Eating and eating and then more eating. I really wanted to stop, but nothing could make me stop. At one point, it was so bad that I just felt like giving up. I felt so alone, like nobody else could possibly understand. We understand. We're Overeaters Anonymous, and we have helped thousands of people just like you. People who want to stop their compulsive eating and start living a healthy, rewarding life. Overeaters Anonymous. Help me get my life back. Now I eat in a way that's healthy and good for me. I never realized what I was missing out on. With OA, I am living again and loving it. Start living the life you deserve with help from Overeaters Anonymous. Find us on the web at OA.org. I like the Amargosa Valley. Radio Law Talk. Now back to the show. So uh, before we get into the next thing, I just want to follow up on one last one last statement, the, the Todd Junin last word about uh, the criminal justice system based upon our last case or no case. And, you know, this person that spent a lot of time behind bars for something she didn't do. You hear this a lot from folks where they say oh, it's just not fair. The criminal justice system needs to be revamped. And and you have to understand what the Constitution provides and guarantees and what it doesn't. The Constitution, where our criminal justice system comes from, you know, Innocent until proven guilty, the presumption of innocence, right to remain silent. You need a warrant for un, uh, protections against unreasonable searches and seizures, the whole ball of wax. That guarantees you due process, but it is not a guarantee that in certain occasions innocent people won't be found guilty, that innocent people won't spend time behind bars. Um, it is a guarantee that if you are accused or looked at, whether rightfully or wrongfully, that you have a mechanism to defend yourself for a system or to raise an argument as to why you did not do what you're accused of doing, it is not a guarantee of the result. It's a guarantee of a process, but not a result. And sadly, we see sometimes people are convicted that didn't do what they're accused of doing, even though a jury said that they are. I don't know if you could ever come up with a system that guaranteed that innocent people would never be found guilty of something they didn't do, uh, you know, unless it was an all-knowing being that came down and says, I can do this and this. And that sounds great, but my problem with a system like that is that same being would say, well, Todd, you might not be guilty of this, but here's a bunch of other stuff that nobody ever knew yeah. about that you are guilty yeah. of. So. Yeah, let's look at the real stuff. I was thinking maybe Bernie Sanders could come up with a plan like that. I'm, I'm, I'm sure, yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. and, uh, yeah, and it, a, along with everybody getting yeah, yeah. Uh, free medical bills in college. I'm, I'm sure it'll come up in one of the debates. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm teasing, Denise, you know that. I did, uh, I did hear the rim show. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, thank you. All right, so I'll, I'll get off my soapbox with that here. Um, opioids. Tyler Skaggs. Uh, sad, sad story. Uh, we covered this one, and the news broke about this one about two months ago. 
uh, Los Angeles Angels, or whatever they're called, they have a really long name. The California Angels, let's see, the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Yes. I think that's what they're called. It's the yeah. other L.A. baseball team. Yeah. It's not the Dodgers. Uh, they're in the American League, and they were on the road in Texas. And the morning of one of their games, what their, one of their pitchers, Tyler Skaggs, was non-responsive. They went to the hotel room, and, and sadly, he was found dead. And, I mean, he was only, what, 27 years old, a professional athlete. I believe he left behind a, a wife and at least one child. Um, you know, the team was devastated. The Major League Baseball was devastated by this occurrence. The game that the Angels were to play against the Texas Rangers was canceled for that day as people remembered Tyler Skaggs. And and by all accounts, just a great kid, uh, loved by his teammates, never really was responsible for any problems, was an upstanding citizen, had gone through a lot to make it back uh, to baseball, had Tommy John surgery, that you, you blow out, he's a right-handed pitcher, you blow out the ligament in your right elbow, that's what happens, and so they take a ligament from your opposite hand, if you're a right-handed thrower, they take a ligament from your left hand, and they replace that ligament in your right elbow with that, so it's your own body and everything, and Recovery time is anywhere from 12 months to 18. His took 24, and uh, but he fought his way back, got back to pitching again. So, a tragedy. And and by all accounts, people were perplexed as to you know, no foul play was suspected, no, no third party did right. this. But they were perplexed as to how he died, and we were all waiting for the toxicology from the coroner's report, and that came out. And Denise, what was it? Well, it was really sad it was is what it was. what it was. It was what it was. Yeah. He had um, 38 nanograms um, per milliliter of oxycodone. Wow. He, that's an opioid. Right. And it was medication he was actually prescribed to treat the pain that he was in. And then he had 3.8 nanograms per milliliter of fentanyl, which doesn't sound like that much, but it's a lot. It's like, what, 100 times <laughs> more powerful than the, than the opioid? I mean, it's, Absolutely. It's brutal stuff. It is. Yeah. Fent- and fentanyl, is, fentanyl is a synthetic opioid, and mainly coming from China. Interestingly enough, that's one of the things that the president wants to put a tariff on because of the effect that it has on well, the U.S. population. Well, he wants to stop it altogether. Yes. But, but, yeah, then but so, so, he, so he had the, he right. Oxycontin, he had fentanyl. What else? And then he had... Um, he was legally drunk. He had alcohol in his system, uh, 0.12%, uh, percent, which is higher than the 0.08. Well, 0.08 legally. is the driving standard. <clears throat> 0.12 is it's not a crazy amount, but when you combine it with two other opioids, wow. That, that's, yes. That's, yeah. that's true. And, and they're all depressants. Yeah. yeah. You know, they're all going to have a similar reaction in your body, and um, his body just gave up. Meaning eventually you depress your breathing system to the point where your body forgets to breathe or you – throw it up and you die that's on the it. vomit. That's it. That's yeah. what happened. He they, actually um glamorous, yeah. Yeah, it was it's just awful. Not regurgitated. What is it called? Yeah, that's, he, that's he, what it is. You got it. Oh, yeah. it, it was it was the throw it, it was the same method of death as um, John Bonham, drummer for Led Zeppelin. Jimmy Page, or not Jimmy Page, Jimi Hendrix, right. uh, famous guitarist oh, from the 60s. Janis Joplin. Janis Joplin, uh, they died on their vomit yep. because they were laying on their back. They would aspirate vomitus, and it would clog the airways, and and they died. And that and that's how he died. Right. Uh, at least that's what the coroner's now, report is saying. The investigation has drawn out um, some information uh, of allegations of other, not team mates, but team employees being involved in this um, uh, drug scene. In essence, so that's the next stage that they're waiting for is the end of that type of investigation to you find know, out. But I have a dumb question about that. When I read the parents were saying we're going to get to the bottom of this, we're going to find out who got this for our son. My question was this, and it's probably a dumb one. Son was an adult. He took that unless somebody injected it in him. He made a free will decision here to load himself up with this stuff. Why are we going after the guys on the team? He well, we don't know do that. that. We don't know if, if the oxycodone was laced with fentanyl because that's what's on no, the that market could, that right could now. That's the issue. That's a so we don't know what he actually knew he was ingesting. So we it, know he drank. Right. And, and, and here, here are some issues that we can look at. First of all, um, this isn't related to Skaggs directly, but there's a doctor in Ohio right now, and he is facing 25 counts of murder. Because he, it's claimed, it's alleged that he over-prescribed painkillers 
and that by the overprescription of these painkillers, the patients died. You had talked about one of the things that happens with the opioid painkillers is it does it depresses the breathing apparatus. And so you will go, I mean, your body, we breathe normally. You don't even think about breathing. Well, if you take too much of these painkillers, these opioids, they're all based, they're all opium-based painkillers, it will stop, it can stop your body from breathing automatically. And when that happens, you, you suffocate. And the allegation with this doctor was that people would come in for treatment, uh, they're in care at this hospital, and he would prescribe the pain medications, and the folks died because they, they just stopped breathing. And it happened at least 25 times. Those are the counts, and he's facing murder. And this is why I bring this up, because the reason the family, I believe, wants to get behind this or understand what's going on in the Skaggs case is that if the medications, Denise had mentioned this, if the medications had come to somebody through a prescribed mechanism, and if he was taking these medications as directed by a physician, I get your point. He's a 27-year-old person. He <clears throat> makes the decision to go ahead and take these medications. But if he was doing it under a doctor's care as directed, then there's this issue about, well, he thought he was doing something fine. The hitch and the giddy-up for that argument is the alcohol. Right. Because every doctor is going to tell you, do not. It's, it's on the warning label. Do not do consume that. with alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 I, and honestly, if somebody is giving him... If somebody's giving him the opioid, prescribing the opioid and fentanyl, I don't know why an athlete who is still out there pitching every day would need both. I get somebody who has just undergone surgery, is in an incredible amount of pain, and I'm speaking from personal experience here, having had two back surgeries in the last eight years and been prescribed things. I get that, but this guy's pitching every day. Well, it, every fourth day, right? Yeah, but yeah. He's throwing every day, probably. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. We're gonna we're gonna get back to. I know Denise has some stuff she wants to bring up with regard to the doctor, and we're gonna get back to Skaggs. We got to go into our uh, three quarter of the hour break. When we come back, we're gonna talk about more about Skaggs, about the doctor, and about Johnson and Johnson and uh, pharma. Stick with us at Radio Law Talk. If you want to participate, the number to call. 855 <laughs> Law Radio. That is 855 529 7234. Perfect. Good job, you guys. All right, stay tuned. There's much more Radio Law Talk straight ahead. And don't forget, if you don't get the whole show, you can always podcast or stream it live at radiolawtalk.com. We'll continue with the program right after this. All advertising for legal services on Radio Law Talk is strictly for the state or states in which the advertiser is licensed. For more information, go to radiolawtalk.com. If you're one of those independent people who wants your own business and you love food service, we just might have a great opportunity for you. Iceberg Drive-Ins. Iceberg is famous for its thick shakes and delicious food. We lend you our supply chain and expertise, and you can potentially have a thriving, successful, fun business that your customers will love. Iceberg Drive-Ins has some prime areas available right now, so if you're interested, get in touch with us right away. Go to icebergdrivein.com and click on the Contact Us button. Iceberg Drive-In, ready to grow with you. Jason Ross back here with Fred Penny, managing attorney from Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers. Now, Fred, what type of cases are you dealing with now, and what sets you apart? Jason, we help people with all types of personal injury cases. We're former insurance company trial lawyers. We understand the other side, which gives us a distinct advantage over our competition. Remember, we don't get paid unless we win. That's Penny & Associates Injury Lawyers with locations throughout California. For a free consultation, go to pennylawyers.com or give them a call 1-800-616-4LAW. That's P-E-N-N-E-Y lawyers.com. This is Denise Dirks. We can represent clients in divorce, legal separation, child and spousal support, custody, termination of parental rights, step-parent adoptions, guardianships, and even conservatorship matters. Call 1-877-886-7186 for a consultation. The law offices of Denise L. Dirks provide family law services in Northern California. When the law affects your family, call 877-886-7186. The family of attorneys at Denise L. Dirks is here to help. 
Not all law firms have extensive experience in all areas of the law. It's wise to look for firms that have knowledge and understanding in your particular area of concern. So go to ProLawFirms.com. They have listings of attorneys in key areas of practice, such as family law, estate planning, personal injury, bankruptcy, and so forth. When you're looking for a lawyer that has extensive experience in your particular area of need, go to ProLawFirms.com. That's ProLawFirms.com. ProLawFirms.com is not a law firm and does not endorse or recommend any specific law firm. I'm going to quick quack car wash. Get my car washed. Make it quick quack. Pretty shiny sexy just because I want to. Don't drive dirty. Going to get my car suds in the quick quack car wash. It's the quick quack quickest and the cleanest by far. We're talking three skinny minutes sitting right in your car. Watch a hundred feet of cloth. Washing your car at the quick quack car wash. Any Honda, Mazda, Ford, or Chevy, Sauber, Cadillac, quick quack. Don't spruce her up just like that. You'll be happy looking snappy. You'll be glad you was at the quick quack car wash. Get on the web and go to don'tdrivedirty.com and see where you got your closest quick quack in the local area. Get in your car. Get in your truck. Get on the road. Come visit the dog. Quick Quack Car Wash, where your car will always leave happy, guaranteed. They take pride in being clean and green by conserving and recycling the water they use only at the Quick Quack Car Wash. Even in the hustle and noise of this modern world, we feel the pull of the forest to walk under the canopy and feel transformed. National forests are essential to life, majestic and grand. They clean our air, supply drinking water to millions, and provide homes to countless wildlife. They fuel our imaginations, inspiring us to think big, and now's the time to do just that. Fires and natural disasters devastate our forests each year. That's why we're replanting millions of new trees across the country. The Arbor Day Foundation needs your help. We've heard the call of the wild and we've answered. Scientists, foresters, volunteers, and members, together we can preserve and protect our heritage and legacy. We must act now so that the generations of today and tomorrow can continue to depend on our forests. Visit arborday.org. See how you can help. Where's Fred? Go to the website radiolawtalk.com you can listen to the show there and there's a lot of other good information too that's radiolawtalk.com we're talking about opioids and the recent death of tyler skaggs and what was found to be the cause of his death and to answer the question we heard coming in where's fred he is on assignment but uh, we miss him hope maybe we'll hear from him via text if we do we'll pass that along I understand, though, Cal, we have a caller that has a comment about the opioid yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah, Dave uh, from Utah is calling, and I think he has uh, uh, something good to offer to this discussion. Dave, go ahead. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Sure. Um, the one thing I think that's missing from this conversation is the law-abiding citizens that take their medication as prescribed and, does not, that, and they do not break the law that are suffering here in Utah because of those that can't control themselves with opioids. There's a huge issue here with the major medical corporation in this state treating everybody as addicts instead of using them as individuals. So automatically, if you're on an opioid, they treat you as an addict. In fact, there was a group of pain patients, law-abiding patients, that were actually in the process of getting a lawsuit ready to be filed here. And I just wanted to put my two cents in because... There's pros and cons to this, but there are good people out there that honestly do need these medications that are suffering. Good point. Thank you very much. Dave, thanks for the call. We'll, we'll respond on the air. Thanks so much for calling. Dave, Dave I hear exactly what you're saying. I'll, I'll, I'm going to use a personal experience. Um, again, as I mentioned before, I've, I've had two back surgeries, L5-S1s, right where your belt is, and for years sitting at a desk and not doing core exercises, the disc just burst and it shot out and was pushing up against a nerve, and I had to go in and have a, a microdiscectomy, and they did that, and, and then I felt okay, and, and then it happened again three years later, and then it happened again recently, and I haven't had surgery this time, but... I was prescribed medication to deal with the pain while pending surgery and to deal with the pain post. And it was at the same time the regulations cracked down on the amount that doctors could prescribe. 
Now, I'm not, I was taking my medication as prescribed, Dave, I hear you 100%, and it was just touching the pain enough to allow me to work, and then they came in and said, we need to cut your dosage because of the new federal guidelines. So now, I have to take a lower dose, which wasn't touching the pain at the time, and when I say pain, it's not just like a paper cut or it hurts, this is excruciating pain. If you've never had back pain, you don't know what I'm talking about, but excruciating pain to the point where I can't sleep. I got tears running down my eyes, and they're cutting my dosage because of people that don't responsibly take the medication. And I was responsibly taking it, but having to suffer, I'll call it, because of the change in the regulations. Cal. And, and cancer patients only able to get a three-day supply. Yeah. Have to run back every three days, so if they're ill and don't have someone doing it for them, the caregivers are horribly inconvenienced. And these are people that are not just addicted out on the street. These are people that actually need a very high, sophisticated level of pain relief to have any quality of life at all. So it's a, it's an interesting dilemma, isn't it, Denise? Uh, I think so. Um, one of the things that I would like to say, too, is even people that responsibly take their medication can become addicted. And I, and, I th and I know, Dave, exactly what you're saying, that it's kind of got this double-edged sword. But I think people also need to be re um, realize that even if you are following the directions of your doctor, every person is individually different. And somebody can become addicted even if they're following the medications and the prescriptions exactly. And that brings us back to the SCAG suit. Because what happens is, and what the family wants to look at here is, if he was addicted to it, did he become addicted because he was taking it as prescribed by the doctor? I got news for you. Opioids, unlike other medications, are not one of those things where if you're taking a certain dosage per day, you can just stop taking it and, and, and be okay. It affects everything in your life from bowel movements to your mood to sweating to your ability to sleep or not sleep. And, and if there is a certain level to which you've been taking it, you need to taper that down. And so they're going to look at all of this to see what was going on with him. Again, the biggest hitch in the giddy up is the fact that he was they had alcohol there. Yeah, but and even though he had alcohol, I, I want to stress that the autopsy found this was an accidental death. This was not Correct. a homicide. This was not a suicide. They found that it was accidental. And That's my, right. My curiosity goes back to the fentanyl uh, because the oxycodone, sure, you can see that, but fentanyl prescribed as an ongoing pain reliever strategy, I just don't know. I'm not a doctor. I don't know, but that seems a little hinky to me. Well, what we learned about the Michael Jackson case is that fentanyl should be prescribed with a doctor being present. Well, that's propofol, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Propofol, I that's got right. it that's mixed right. up. I apologize. Well, same, you know, same family of drugs, though. It's the same family of drugs, right, right. Uh, but one is um, uh, intravenous and the other one right. is not. The, the, look, the other thing they're going to look at here, and we talked about this going into the break, I get it if somebody is post-surgery. Look, I had, I was taking more, I was prescribed more than one type of painkiller post-surgery. I mean, my back was cut open and, and I had to have this so that I could sleep and, and recuperate. And I get that. But if you are playing baseball, every pitching every fourth day and, and just going through the normal workouts on a daily basis, to be prescribed two different painkillers, I guess the question that the family would have for the doctor is, was this in his best interest or was this in the best interest of the team to make sure that your investment, millions of dollars, in a player that you could recoup the benefit of that investment by making sure that they're out there playing every day? That's always been a common complaint on the part of plaintiffs suing teams after their playing days are over. Look, you guys weren't looking at me. We, I mean, we covered the case of the college guy that had the concussion and, and they sent him back into the game because they were more worried about the team and winning the game than his individual health. And there's always that balance that they've got there. And that's going to be an issue that they deal with, with, with Skaggs and what the attorneys are going to be looking at. Nothing's been filed yet. Well, but they I, will be I'm, looking. I'm fairly certain that this is not going to be a case of a doctor over-prescribing medication. Michael, I feel yeah, I, read, reading between the lines right. and the, where the investigation is going, it looks like he got the at least part of this um, uh, drug from an, another source than a doctor. 
and probably he had not he was not being prescribed those opi- opioids any longer that's my in that's my f- feeling or in, you know, whatever intuition sure. and we're going to find out that there is someone involved that got the drugs for him and it's going to be kind of like a Bellucci that, situation that, that, Bellucci. that could be and you know an example of a doctor over prescribing medication is the Ohio doctor it's crazy and, and this is a uh, the guy who has purposely he is he is alleged to and is facing criminal murder 25 counts of murder right he's already been indicted by the Franklin County Grand Jury out of Ohio. And this this case is just abnormal. You're talking about during this time that these people were dying, he was actually giving them doses of fentanyl or at least instructing him the patients to be given fentanyl between 500 and 2000 micrograms, which is a lot. Wow. And that shortened these patients' lives and actually hastened or caused their death. And um, the the weird thing about this is that the hospital let him practice four weeks longer after they discovered this irregularity of all these people dying on his time, if you will. And he took out almost an entire ward of employees, a hospital staff, that went had to go with him. Some of them were fired outright. Some of them were put on leave. And we're talking it was like 30, 30 that were put on leave, and 18 no longer work with the hospital. So, so the question here is, you know, when a doctor prescribes these high amounts, the nurse is the one that has to actually administer the medications to these folks. Now, nurses, and, and I got this from uh, from registerednurses.org and a couple little research I did. Nurses can question whether or not a doctor has overprescribed medication. They can go up the chain of command. Um, I, I think that it's one thing to say that they can do that, from the inter-office politics, it may be a little more difficult for a nurse to do that. I will say that these nurses ha- are not being prosecuted uh, criminally for their act. They have all escaped that, but they have been dismissed or suspended based upon whatever people believe and their violation of duty they is. They could be sued, too, civilly. Perhaps, but it seems to be that it's a right to do this, but it's not a duty. So we're talking about whether or not they can be sued because they have a duty to do something. I don't think that's going to happen. Don't you also have to look at intent? Well, I guess it's a it's, topic for another time. Exactly. Okay. We got an hour in the books. We'll be back um, at the top of the next hour with moving on to lawsuits in pro sports and basketball and what's going on. You're listening to Radio Law Talk. Catch our podcasts at radiolawtalk.com. Remember, the Radio Law Talk is live Pacific time, 9 to noon every Saturday, so you can catch the show live at that time. You have been listening to RadioLawTalk.com, a copyrighted presentation of Radio Law Talk Incorporated.